Hello there, YouTube. This is my volume control knob I'm putting in my little mini diesel speaker. This is a nice little speaker. At the time I bought it, it was probably going to sell around $10 or something. This is a surface mount knob. What I did was, it might be hard to pick up on camera, the studs weren't quite long enough, so I dremeled the plastic thinner around the nuts with my dremel. And just no wire. Glad I measured close. This is a surface mount knob. I'll be putting hot glue over these to protect it. I drilled the hole, fed the wire up through, soldered it, clipped off the tail. I always say in all my videos do not wrap wires around these terminals. Make like a fish hook, J hook. I call it like a hook. Solder it, clip the little tail off. And here's the knob. It has a very small screw on it. So this won't stick up very far. It's not going to stick up very far. And it's going to be on the bottom. You could see the numbers if you looked up at it. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. But that's the way it'll look when we're done. We don't care about the numbers. We're going to go by what it's not, how loud we want it. Here's where the speaker wire comes in the back. Okay. And what we did was, I always turn the knob this direction. I have the hot side coming in here. So I'm going to put on the hot side of the speaker line. And then here's the line going out. We will be splicing into the hot wire going to the speaker. Okay. So we're just going to cut the hot side, splice this in. And I'll show that when I'm done. This is a nice little compact knob. If you want these speakers to sound a little bit different, to me it's better. Uh, wad up some Kleenex and put back behind the speaker. This is a plastic speaker, which is nice. See how it's see-through? So it's probably going to be waterproof. They had a good magnet on it. I don't know if you can buy these anymore. Maybe you can. I've had this for probably 10 years. But wad some tissue paper up and put behind it. That's what I had in here when I took it apart. It gives it a little better sound. It isn't so cheesy plastic sounding. But I like this because I'm going to have this on my scanner mounted close to me. So I don't have to have the scanner in So I can reach up and turn the scanner down. That was the whole idea I bought this. It never was used on a CB. It used to be used on my scanner. Brackets long gone. At least I still saved the little screws and the rubber washers. If the bracket's long gone, we can bend one of them out of plexiglass, aluminum, anything. So, this has some nice little knobs on it. But, we'll continue on with the video, so this isn't real long. You can kind of see in there where I ground the plastic down. So I'd have more room on there. I will also put hot glue over those to insulate it, plus that way they'll never come loose. It's a nice knob. I cannot tell you what it came out of. It could have been a transistor radio. It is 10K, 10,000 ohm. I like using them on a speaker better than a 5. I get seem to get more control. I've used both over the years. But there you go. We'll get back to work and we'll show you what it's like once we get it wired up before we put put it all back together. Okay, we'll do our best to explain this. Here's where the two wires come in from your radio from the plug. Here's the hot one. It's going into the switch. It's coming out of the switch, going over to the positive, which is the top, this one right here, okay? Now the ground is coming in and just hooks up normal. Here's the ground side of the speaker. It's going to the line. I have a picture of this knot I made. I think they call electricians not. That's what you do when you wire a lamp. Never tie your wires. Never take your double wires together and just tie it into a knot. Split it apart. I have a picture. That is how you wire a lamp. You're asking for trouble on a, like a house lamp or something when you do that. See down in there? I have a picture included. I'm not a know-it-all, but I know that's how you do it on a lamp. Don't take both wires tied in a knot. That is a no-no. This is how I learned from uh, studying electrical stuff, and I even did it when I was a kid. I'd redo lamps. 
That's the proper knot. You split it, and then you tie it. Just one half knot, whatever they call it. If you, I'll have a picture of it so you can see how it is. And that's the quick of it. Here comes the, and this uses the white stripe for the positive. Always check with your own meter on the end of your cord to find out which is positive. And then make sure your speaker, it is marked. I should put a red magic uh, sharpie marker on there to mark positive, but it does have the little plus sign. But your positive comes in, goes to the center of the switch. That's how I do it. You probably do it either way. It'd work. Go to the center of the switch, come out whatever side you're going to use, whatever direction you want the knob to work. Go to your positive. Your ground just goes complete. Okay, I'm going to seal all this up with glue over top of these nuts. And I also will seal, as I mentioned earlier, these terminals back here. I'm going to put my tissue paper back in here because I like that. I like the sound of the tissue paper. This is pretty solid, the way it sets here. I have a little trouble with the screws. There's one gone, and these feel kind of stripped when I took them out. I think I'm going to put a little bit of glue in these. Hot glue, just a little drop around it, so it will kind of make it grab a little better when I screw it together. I've done it on stuff. Because they felt a little cheesy. Like they really wasn't tight when I took them out. And one of them was gone. So over the years, one of them has fell out. So. You could use, uh, even model car glue helps. Elmer's glue, wood glue, anything. Put a little glue in there. You don't want to use Loctite in it when you can't ever get it apart. Just put some kind of glue in there and it kind of helps with the vibration. Because I'm sure if this was in a truck bag rig rolling down the road, it would fell apart by now. If one screw was gone, the other three was loose, it'd fell apart going down the road. But I think I explained that good enough. I'll take a couple pictures of it. If someone wants to look at the picture. Just remember in the picture that this is the hot one coming in. Over here, I'll leave this lay exactly like this hot one comes in. It comes in switch and it comes up here. These have been soldered and taped, and here's the positive one up here. So you can always refer to the picture. Okay, the skip is falling out. You can hear that Harley going out of town. Maybe not, the camera will pick it up. Okay, looks kind of ugly where I put that hot glue. You're not going to see it. You can put a piece of tape, and it's going to fall off. All these knobs are about the same. That's why if, if I would learn to put whatever in there, there there's something clear to help do that. When you get almost to the end, it's like a slow blast all of a sudden. And a little more to go. So watch me turn the knob. I wouldn't recommend on any external speaker doing this little thing that I did. Don't crank it up all the way up like this. Don't put too much into it. I have the volume on the ray about halfway. So I use it on my scanner. I usually don't use this on a TV. I would turn it down to where... It's about halfway. It's all the way down. I can barely hear it coming through here. Wait, it's so blaring loud. I have a little bit of glue catching on my knob back there. I have to clean that up. Let's go to let's go to Sideman. That's on ten eleven on the CB. It's almost like a clock running somewhere. I don't know what it is. I pick it up every once in a while. Sideband is a cleaner sound. That's lower sideband. Upper. And. And I'm not going to take the noise like it off. Well, yeah, we will. Lower. Upper sideband. Lower sideband, upper sideband. And.
Sounds like a clock to me. What the clock I am here is a battery clock. So on channel 11, you can hear it on channel 12 a little bit. I do not know what it is. I just moved my battery clock in the radio. I don't think it's my fan or my power supply. So it picks up on one frequency. We'll go to channel 12. 13 or 12, 11, and that's my scanner beeping up there. And whenever there's highway patrol there, it has an alert system in it. But that's how I do it. I turn it all the way down, and I put the radio. That's full blast. You don't want that. I put the ray about halfway so you can just hear it with the volume turned down. That way if you turn it down, you're not going to miss something if it's quiet. But I like doing this because you can have this speaker somewhere and say I have the radio close by. So I have it with the scanner. The scanner's on the shelf. This will be mounted close by me. So, that's enough of that. I included some pictures of the wires. I did explain it. It's pretty simple. I always go to the center of the switch. I always turn the switch this way. I bring the hot in coming from the radio to the center of the of the knob, and then going out, I go to the left. That way, it's clockwise. And, turn it and if this was this way, the numbers would be right there in the front. I have some glue catching down around the knob I have to work on. That's it. That's my conversion. To put a knob in my little mini diesel speaker. Now it won't sit on the desk. So I'm going to set it again. Thanks for watching.